friends, welcome back into my studio. My name is Kaylee and I paint wet on wet oil paintings. Today we're here for tutorial number six. I'm going to show you a nice calm water mountain scene. It's just a really relaxing scene and we're using a limited palette. I wanted to show you how I apply the liquid white onto the canvas this time. So if you already know how to do that, feel free to speed forward uh, through this little section here thing is we'll take the liquid white and I use a foam brush because I don't want to wash all of my brushes so this is just an easy way to eliminate one of the steps of washing so I don't have to wash my brushes until the very end and I'm going to just kind of apply it on a little messy here and I just want to get it into some of these key sections like the corners. My paint got a little chunky, but we'll get some of those out. And I'm just going to apply a thin, even coat all over the canvas. So I like to apply it kind of in all four corners and then I move, move it all around. So now I'll use the brush by doing these X strokes, this helps to get it deep into the canvas, into all the little pockets. So you really want to make sure that you're getting it into all of the sections of canvas. And I like um, some canvases that are a little bit rougher to the touch and some are a little softer. So just depending on what type of canvas you have. Um, you'll have a, a different approach on how you apply your liquid white. But I have to get a little aggressive because this is a pretty tough canvas. Um, I really like painting on them. I'll link them in the description of this painting for you. I'm just using this foam brush to push the liquid right, white around to make sure we don't have any spots where it's missing. All right, now I'm using long, even strokes to distribute it and make sure that it's all distributed very evenly now that we have it all in all the sections that we want it. Long strokes this way. I missed a spot there. And after you paint more, you'll start to feel the, the um, texture and how it slides across and you'll know how much paint, if you need more or less. And the last thing I like to do is just take one of my little um, towels that I have and just kind of wipe off any of the excess. You don't have to do this. I just don't like there being too much. Okay, we have the liquid white applied onto the canvas. It's nice and thin and even. You can check it with your finger. You can check it by looking at it from different angles or you can just call it good enough and move on. That's what I'm gonna do today. Here is my palette. I'll show you what colors I have and they'll come either across the screen or in the description. I haven't decided what I like more. Titanium white, bright red, alizarin crimson, phthalo green, prussian blue, and we have a combination here of phthalo green and alizarin crimson. They're about even. I do like it a little bit more with the alizarin crimson, so I put just a touch more of crimson in there. I'm gonna mix this into um, a gray black mixture and we'll jump right into the painting. Before we actually get going, I just wanted to mention, I have been testing out a couple different studio setups. So I hope that you all can be patient with me while I try and get it figured out. It, it is really hot here in Utah and I'm kind of just mixing between a few different garages more or less. So. Um, I'm, I'm in a different garage and we'll see how this works out. Okay, I have my gray mixture all mixed up here. I'm going to show you what it looks like 
You can mix it with just a little bit of white to kind of get an idea of what color you have. And so that's our gray mixture. It's phthalo green and alizarin crimson mixed together. I'm going to take my big two inch brush and dip right into this gray mixture that we made. And we're also going to pick up a tiny bit of Prussian blue. And I mean a tiny, tiny bit. I just wanted to blue this color down just a touch. Now we're gonna pick up some titanium white. We can just pick up some of this light gray. Why not? I think something like this. Put my palette down. And starting from the top, I'm just going to move in some texture from each corner. I want the darkest parts to be in the corners. We're having texture, just some clouds and movement. We don't really know. And then I'm going to add some of this down into the corners down below as well. A little more over here. And remember, the harder that you push with your brush, the more paint that's going to come off. If you haven't seen my new brush wash tutorial video, that just came out. It's live now and it's just a little, um, just a quick video on how I make my brush wash. So be sure to check that out. I'll link it below and also in the video, maybe up over here. I'm just going to use that same dirty brush to kind of swirl around and mix this paint in the background. I just want to create a really soft scene today and I thought we would just kind of do something really, I mean in my eyes maybe simple. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to make it easier for you with some of the technique that I might show you today. But we're going to do something that I think is just a really pretty calming scene. Bonus, I'm really low on paints, and this includes all the paints that I currently have. So, we're doing some fun stuff. We're learning and practicing how to use different paints and using what you have to satisfy your wants to paint. It doesn't matter if you don't have all the paints that I'm using. I want to give you a few different options of styles of paintings that you can still create using different colors and limited colors. You can definitely change this one up in a bunch of different hues by just choosing a few different colors. So send me your ideas. Show me what you create with this one. Be excited to see what you all come up with. Okay, I'm gonna stop messing around with that. I'm just blending away. I want to add just a tiny little bit of clouds in the sky. So we're going to pick up some titanium white and bright red, just a touch. I just want to dull the paint a little bit and not have the bright white. So a little bit of that bright red works really well. And for this painting, we're going to have the sun coming from the left here. So with that, We'll go ahead and just pop in a few little cloud and movements into the sky. And I'm just going to pick up some more paint of that bright red and titanium white. And we'll start back in here and move a few more. I'm really just wiggling the brush about and letting whatever falls off fall off. 
be picking up more of your bright red and titanium white mixture. Oof, I made mine really bright right there. Uh, okay. But that's okay, you can just get more white out. I'm just going to pick up my two inch brush and we'll wipe off a little bit of that extra paint that we still had on there. If you have a clean brush, you can use that. I really like to make mine go the distance and avoid a lot of cleaning. Call me the lazy painter, but that's okay. I am just blending out the bottom of these clouds, thinking the, the light is coming from this top left area. So we're blending out the bottom right and just softening those edges. Because we want these clouds to be in the background. So if they're too big and fluffy, they're going to look really huge and like it's a big giant storm right here. But if we kind of soften them, then they'll, they'll look a little bit further up in the sky, a little more just wispy and kind of happy. Okay, lift those clouds right up. I work in a semicircle around the frame, so I'm lifting and moving out and the same on this other side and then i'm going to bring them back down into the center and this just gets out the rest of the brush strokes except for those ones that i missed <laughs> okay i'm just going to clean out this brush a little bit into the liquid white here and just really make this kind of misty in the lower bits of the sky. Great. We're going to go right into the mountain. We will pick up some of this gray mixture, a little bit of titanium white, some Prussian blue, and mix that up. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more crimson. And I want this to be a little bit more marbled, so just try not to overmix it. It's good when you get some variety in there. And we'll pull out a nice thin bit of paint and cut across to get your wool. And we're going to create this kind of big mountain scene here of these kind of epic mountains in the background. So I'm using my knife and just cutting it in. Get some more paint. Now I'm just scraping off some of that extra paint. Get a little bit of movement. And we'll put one in over on the other side. Get some more paint.
And the only part that's really important on the mountain is this top section here. So you wanna make sure that you're pushing your paint into the canvas right on that top where it's most important. All right, let's pick up our two inch brush and soften out the base. Now I'm just tapping into where the very end of this paint meets the liquid white and I want to create a misty effect. So the more that you tap it, the more of this liquid white is going to pick up and blend with that mountain mixture that we have. Just get off a little bit of that extra paint. And let's try this other side. I'm going to lift that mountain up. And just get out all those brush strokes you just put in. And they just want to kind of get rid of these harsh bits here. So starting at the bottom where it's brightest, we will move that liquid white up and we're gonna kind of gray this out here a little bit. And this is just going to help us because we're mixing this color now into the canvas, getting it ready for the next layer. Before we get to adding any more detail onto the mountains, I want to just add a little bit more into our water here because we're going to have some reflections. So I'm going to just darken up the corners just a touch by just taking this mountain color. And I want to do the same thing on this side. Soften that. I can feel my brush just catching on this stretcher bar here and sometimes it's a little difficult to get those lines out. Most of the time I can get it to go away though, so we'll just very softly brush over until we can get them to soften. Looks a little better there. Okay, let's move on. I wanted to just add in this mountain as a reflection down here in the water. So an easy way to do that is to pick up your filbert brush or just any old brush and some of your mountain mixture and we'll pick out these points and add them down into the water. Then you can kind of trace out you know, your like rough idea of what this mountain kind of looks like reflected down. So we're just making kind of some rough ideas. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the um, phthalo green into the brush. And kind of get this 
just brushed in here really lightly. You can use the palette knife as well, which is what I tend to use more often, but I thought this might be easier. So try it with your brush. I'm going to put like the most amount of paint down at the point and move it up this way. And I want just a little bit more dark. Just there, and we'll do the same thing over on this other side. So these two are almost the same. This one's a little bit higher. And we've got a little glob, and then it's going to kind of come down over here. Something like that. Rough guideline. Doesn't have to be exact. You just want to give the idea. Let's go ahead and blend that out just like we did before. We're going to tap. I'm tapping in like a fan direction here on these. I just really want to soften this out. And I'll get rid of some of that paint and we're going to pull straight up. I'm just getting some of the paint off. You want to go straight up as best you can and straight across. Soften this out. just make that nice and soft in there. Okay, next we will pick up some titanium white, a good bit of it, bring it right over here. We've got a little bit of our mountain mixture in there, that's okay. And we want bright red. So it's a grayish, reddish color here. This is going to be our first color for the highlight side. And then we're going to mix up shadow color right over here into our blue. Some mountain mixture. I want more Prussian blue. Leave that marbled. Nice shadow side on the base for our highlight side. And when we clean off our brush, we'll mix up one more color this is our final highlight color, which is just the same as our cloud mixture. It's titanium white and bright red. That's it. Now I'm going to put my palette down and we're going to work on these mountains. Highlight side first. I'm picking up a nice thin uh, roll of paint and we're going to pick out our highlights on the right side of the mountain. Remember our light is on the right or <laughs> left. This is the left. Left side of the mountain. This, the light is coming from the left. painting with my right. I got that part right. Okay. Let's grab some highlight. This is that grayer mixture for the highlight that we mixed up over here. And I'm just dragging 
the knife down the mountain to create some highlights. And I want to get a little bit of texture, some movement. I think maybe we'll have mm, a little bit more here and just a little on this guy here. Cool. Now we'll take a little bit of that color and kind of just drag a little bit into the reflection down below. It doesn't have to be exact. We just want a little bit of this to match. Making sure that it sticks with kind of the general broad strokes of what we did up here. That seems pretty believable. Huh? Let's try it. Now what we will do is clean off your knife and we're gonna go right up into this highlight and kind of grab a little bit and pull it into our shadow side. Just a little tug. It sticks, your knife will stick right into it and just kind of grab some of it. And we're just going to pull it sort of in the opposite direction. And we'll do a little bit of that down here. It won't work the same because we don't have as thick of paint. But we'll just get a little bit by just kind of scraping some of that paint in the opposite direction down in our shadow or in our reflections down here, we really don't want a lot of this paint. So if we're actually kind of helping ourselves by scraping some of this off a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to get our shadow color. Scrape off your roll and start with your shadows. You want to work farthest away, moving forward as best you can, creating different angles, all kind of working towards this base, but adding a little bit of variety and kind of mixing this up as it's all going in this general direction. And we'll do a little bit of shadows over here. Get some of that blue mixture in there. Down in your reflection, we want a little bit of those blues with the white, get those in there. Now clean off your knife and we'll go right back into our bright highlight color. It's just bright white and a little bit of titanium red, uh, titanium white and bright red. Wow, maybe I need some coffee. We'll drag this down, just get a little bit of extra pop in some little areas here. where we might see just a touch of highlight really popping on that mountain from above.
nice. Just a touch down here to make sure you get that nice bright white, some of those sections to kind of sync up so your eyes will focus on them a little bit, but you just will notice that they seem like they match, not necessarily if they do exactly match, but we're kind of trying to trick your eyes into believing it, so hang with me. It should all work, we'll see. I'm just kind of softening down some of that, some of those thick bits of paint there. I was just pulling off a little bit of extra, not too much. And I wanna take my two inch brush and very, very lightly tap out the base of what we just did. Very light, barely touching, lift that up. Lift, soft, same thing. Nice. And I wanna blend out this reflection a little bit as well. We're gonna do the same thing, kinda of clean off our brush and just very lightly lift right up, straight up. And across. There we go. And get some of these, just a little bit too much kind of blue right here in that area. It's a little strong. So I just tapped it out a little bit and I'm just gonna lift very lightly. We'll just kind of soften this. There we go. Awesome. Let's do another layer of mountains. Cut off another roll of paint with your knife right into that same color we were just using. And I'm thinking kind of this ledge right here. Comes in and just all the way down. And I want rock over here. Get a little bit more shape over here. Just want it to be kind of, not like just a straight line, you know, just a little bit of kind of interest, a little bit of Mixing it up all the way down. We'll go to about there. And we'll take this one. Ooh, I got a little bit of a bit of a red mixture there. And this, I want this one to come down and meet right in the middle here. Make sure to get a good little bit of paint in this area. We want to move our paint around by scraping it. Take our two inch brush. Blend that out. You already know. Be careful right here. You don't want to mess up our reflection that we just worked so hard on. So we'll be real careful. Just soften this area. Real quiet there, yeah. All right, get some of that paint out of the brush and lift this up. Lift just in these edges, get out those brush strokes and then very carefully here again, we're gonna lift 
as best we can without messing up what we've already done. That's okay, we'll come back and we'll make it all work out because we're going to pick up our brush again and we're gonna match our mountains down here. So this one, just a touch higher, we've got another, like a point right there. Moving down, we've got this. And we're just matching as best as we can these lines. And just, you know, do, do your best. It's, that's all you can do. It doesn't have to be exact. You shouldn't be trying to copy my painting. Just use this as, you know, some rough guidelines to get you going and get your creative juices flowing. And hopefully you can create something fun, just like this or something really similar, or you've seen some mountains near you that you really wanna paint, but you wanna use these colors. Maybe you're just learning, you're just starting out and you wanna just follow along completely. I would love to just see what you come up with because everybody's creation is going to be different. And I'm just kind of connecting the dots here, so to speak, by trying to mimic the mountain that I had already put in up high, but you know, we're just doing what we can to get it really close because it, there's just no way that you're gonna get it exact. Okay, I'm using just that same mountain mixture, the marbled mixture that we made in the very beginning for our mountain and pushing this from the top where it's really important down. And I really want to emphasize that this one is in front, so we'll make sure that it's really dark and stands out against this neck, this the layer before. <clears throat> Let's blend a little bit of this out. I should miss some of this. We'll just pull this down. Soften this. I'm just going to try and get out some of these brush strokes in here. Okay, one last time before we do some highlights, we're pulling our reflections up. Now the reason that we're pulling it up is because I don't want to mess up this line here. I really want that to stay. So if I were to pull it down, it's gonna change the line that we created and that kind of just defeats the whole point that we did. So we are pulling from the bottom to kind of push that reflection around and just get it to move around a little bit. And I wanna make sure that I'm lifting as straight up as I can. Now we'll blend across just kind of getting rid of a few of these streak lines that were coming down across over here. Really soften that out. I'm barely touching the canvas, barely. 
so soft. Okay. We need to mix up a little bit more of our highlight colors. We have a little bit of mountain mixture and titanium white. A touch of bright red. Grab a little roll of that. This is our highlight color. So we'll start on the left, which is where the sun is. And we'll just pull in some features where we think the sun might be hitting. Let's try over here. Now a shadow, we'll just work a little bit of shadow in on this other side. And as I'm pulling the shadow color, I'm also grabbing some of that highlight color and moving it in. There's definitely just a couple ways to do that. Pulling in some shadows. And I want to just add in a couple over here on this lower section. Awesome, let's do the same thing below. A little bit of highlights and a little bit of shadows. Just try and make them match up a little bit. They don't have to be exact. A little bit of shadows, run it out of paint. And we'll just kind of move this paint, make sure that we've got no really thick sections of it. I want to make sure that it's distributed nicely. Pull in these shadows, a little bit of blue down here. Just the general idea. Blend. Cross and down. And we'll tap out some of this mountain and lift that up. We're gonna leave that. Pick up your fan brush and we are going to go into our dark gray mixture that we mixed up in the very, very, very beginning. This is just alizarin crimson and phthalo blue, phthalo green, 
the Lucerne Crimson and Thalo Green, and then we're going to add Prussian Blue. Now you can't really see it, but it's a very dark color. So that's what I want. I want a real dark color. And we're going to put in kind of just a nice, simple row of trees back here in the distance. I'm just tapping the fan brush with the top part of the brush and pulling it down just ever so slightly. Tap and pull down. And I'm going to move the brush, reload. We want lots of dark, dark paint on the brush. Tap and pull down changing up so it's not just one straight line across. I want to have a little bit of variety. Speed that up a little. Flip the brush over, you might have a little bit more paint left. Now we'll just finish this off. I'm going to go a little bit quicker here. Lots of repetition. All the way across. I'm gonna just start up over here so I know where I'm headed. more paint. And just to show you, I'm loading this brush. I've shown you before, but you really want to get a lot of brush into the fan brush. So I like to wiggle it a lot and you'll pull it through the paint and then you can flatten it out. So we've got a lot of paint in the brush. all the way down, getting more paint, and just moving across the canvas with our fan brush, tapping at the corner and pulling that down, straight down. Going to just soften just a little bit of these. I want to add just a touch of mist in between a couple layers just to make it look a little more interesting. If you want, you can take your fan brush that now has some dirty paint on it. Actually, I need to kind of correct this. Got to give it a little bit of a tail in there. It's kind of missing. Fix that. Good as new. You never knew. Okay. Let's grab just your fan brush. It's dirty. And I'm just pulling this reflection down a little bit. out the base over here. Just soften that into the canvas. Get your dirty paint off. I think I'm going to go right into the middle and lift up right here. I want to just lift this top section straight up. I'm trying to get out some of these extra brush strokes, lifting straight up. Ooh, that's hard. I 
hand will come and just soften out. And I want to pull these ones kind of down a little bit. So I'm just softening out some of those brush strokes. You just don't want there to be too much paint here so that when you go and start messing with your reflections that you you know pull too much around and it just messes up your mountain it just sets you up for success in the future so we just want to soften down that paint and just kind of blend this out this line is a little too harsh I'm not liking that good enough okay leave it move on we'll do another layer of these awesome trees. All of our dark colors. And I want these still to just kind of be out in the distance, so I'm not doing any specific tree outlines. These are just these little foothills kind of at the base of the mountain that are full of just this dense forest, big forest that is just kind of hiding the base of the mountain and just, you know, I mean, you think it's probably kind of rugged, but you don't really know these trees are just kind of hiding what's behind and under. And just filling this whole area in here We'll go in and put a border in between those two in just a minute. Getting more paint. I want all the paint in my brush. Very thick, dark. And we'll push up with our fan brush and meet in the middle. A little bit more right here let's leave that and just to make this easier I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these and just put them right over here in my dark mixture that I ran out of it's easier if it's all piled up in one spot there we go Back to the fan brush. I am loading my brush into that big pile of paint we just made, wiggling it and making it into a point. We'll do another one more little foothill on this side. And I just want to kind of cap off this section here. And like I said, we're doing just a really simple, hopefully you all will enjoy this simple mountain reflection scene. Kind of a cool scene. Limited palette. We really only had one, two, three, four, five colors. And then we mixed one into our own. So five is just five paints. This is your running out of paint tutorial. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Well, but really though, I am running out of paints. So now you all get to enjoy this fun little scene. I hope you enjoy it. I'm just matching up now we'll turn the fan brush and kind of get some up in this center. I'm going to call that good enough. Let's see. I'm going to pick out where my reflections are going to be now and very carefully pull this down into the base of our mountain. We really want to emphasize these deep reflections. Pull that across very lightly, but very important.
important all the way across. Same over here. Light, light touch straight across, straight, as straight can be. Goodness, that's hard. Okay, let's leave that. I'm gonna, let's maybe, okay, fix this part. Love it. I want to add some highlights on these distant trees just to add a little bit of detail, but not because they're so far away, right? So to do that, we'll pick up some titanium white and I'm gonna pick up liquid white and we're going to thin out this color. It's just to whatever was left on the brush and white, it's just thinned out a little bit lighter obviously than what we have. And I wanna just touch on a few of these areas and add in some kind of snowy highlights. Just a little over here and kind of just move that across. Next, I want to pick up a towel and kind of get out as much of this paint as I can. And I'm going to go fresh into the titanium white and some bright red. liquid white and just a hint on this highlight side we're just touching on the left side of some of these little bushes we just tapped in just to add a little bit of highlight that might be coming right in through here and Let's touch on a few of these pine trees back here that might just have a little bit of highlight on them. I want to lift that up and just soften it real lightly and leave that. Now, I want to scrape in a few little sticks and twigs way back and then we'll kind of just cut in a few logs or something, I don't know, whatever these are, some trees. This is the dark side, like the shadow side, so there's not going to be much going on over here. Just kind of match some of these into the water. I want to add this side, the shadow looks really dark, but this shadow isn't as dark, so I'm going to kind of just add a little bit of paint on my palette knife and pull it down just to darken it a touch in here with your brush, soften it. There we go. I like that better. Pull that across. Now we're going to put in a little bit of land. And I'm just going to use my dark color for something for it to stick to. And we'll put in some land. Same thing over here. I'm just cutting off little rolls of our dark mixture and pulling off some barrier in between our dark and our light. I want to pull that down ever so slightly. Give it a reflection. A 
come across. Okay. Next, we will highlight our rocks with some titanium white, bright red. Get a little roll of paint. I want this to be a little more marbled. There we go. We'll see how that works. This is our highlight. Just pull that across our dark color that we just put on. Now we're going to go into a little bit more of a blue mixture for this shadow side. There's your highlights. Pull a tiny bit of that down. across so light and then I want to make sure I just go all the way across just make it as straight as I can we're going to cut in a little bit of a water line, but before we do that, let's just add in a touch of highlight over here with our fan brush. Go into the liquid white, titanium white, bright red. And we'll just pop in a few more bushes over here. that are grabbing some snow right here at the base. We'll pop in some reflections. Pull that down. Go across. Scratch out some few sticks. There's going to be a lot more of them right now because this is kind of a winter scene. Sticks and twigs. Just a few. Liquid white on your knife now. We're going into this gray mixture. We've been using a whole bunch of it. Just cut some of that off onto the end of your knife. This is a thin, thinner paint. And we're just going to cut into the base of this rock baseline, whatever that we put in over here. I don't know. My words are hard. Cutting across. I'm just pushing this knife into the canvas and letting a little bit of paint pull off. It is a thin down blue mixture with liquid white and titanium white and our mountain blue mixture. Let's just put in a few more lines. And do the same thing on this side. Putting in some little water marks, like kind of maybe it's ice out here. I think there's probably still water. Yeah. yeah, let's have it be just really cold water. How about that? Really cold water, and there's going to be a boat. Let's go right into bright red and alizarin crimson.
And we're going to put in a boat. Thing. I changed that. Make it a little more back this way. And I'm just using a dark mixture. This is just bright red and alizarin crimson. And we'll go across. Okay, I want to add this also kind of a, as a reflection, just make a rough idea of this reflection before we get too far. And I'm going to add in some of our dark mountain mixture. A little bit of that into the base of the boat to really make that dark. Okay, now what we're going to do is bring out some of this boat. I'm going to see about just dipping right into the bright red and pulling this around the front of the boat. Liquid or titanium white and bright red. Just going to pick up a little sable brush and soften out this paint. I just want to make it really, really, really soft. And I'm going to do the same thing down below. Clean off the Filbert brush. Pick up some titanium white and right across this back we'll put in the back of the boat. And we're just picking up paint from the palette or from the canvas now with that titanium white on it. And a little bit more right over here. in some shadow soften that
I'm going to pick up some of my titanium white, which is a huge, let's just clean off the spot first. I don't care if it's dirty, we just want a nice spot for this thick white. It's got a little bit of bright red, it's kind of a grayed down white. And what we're going to do is just put in these boards on the boat. It's kind of like a wooden boat. So I'm just pulling thick paint down. And before we do the front, I want to pull this down. We'll just pick up our sable brush and I'm just going to lift up and kind of soften. You just don't need too much detail on this and it'll, the less detail that we put, the better that it'll probably look anyway. I'm not really a boat painter, but we're all just trying this together and having fun. We're all just having fun. I'm going to pick up some of this red mixture that I mixed down here. It's a little bit of a darker color than our final. And we're going, what am I doing? I think I'm just going to pull this down. Pull the color kind of down on the boat. Maybe attempting to make it look a little rounded. Just going to soften it. To that, we are going to just darken up this side here a little, and we're going to lighten up the other side with a little bit of bright white and bright titanium white and bright wet red. Wow, this is just struggle. Okay, I'm going to pull down some highlight on here. You can really, I encourage you to um, try a little bit harder on your boat and, um, you know, practice it up and get some better technique. I just wanted to put it in here. I'm going to show you how simply you can try to have just a basic little painting without a ton of effort. I'm going to soften this out one more time. Then we're going to put in with some bright white, just this top board. On both sides. Just flatten that out. And I'm going to add in some 
some shadow color down here. And last, we're going to take uh, some of your dark color on your palette knife and just run along and like put in a few kind of like boards because it's supposed to be, you know, like a wooden boat. <laughs> so we're just going to pretend that it is. Look at that. How simple was that? Maybe a few back in here. a little shadow right below. So simple, huh? To finish that off, we're just going to put in some waterline. Oh, you know what we need to do is just pick up some of this like mountain, this gray mixture that we had and we'll put just like a little highlight sort of in the shadow of the water. This is just this top bit of the white. Got to add that in there just to make it look better. Nice. Palette knife. Liquid white into a blue mixture a little bit more. We want some just to thin down the titanium white and have it with a blue, just like a blue hue. And we are going to scrape in some water around the edge of this boat. Really just set it in there. And we'll do a couple more water lines. Give this a little signature. Thin down my brush wash right into my bright red. And I'm gonna sign this. If you wanna do more, you should. I have somewhere to be. So I'm going to finish it. A little more pink. Well, what did you think? I tried to keep it uh, as simple as I could, just a real basic mountain reflection scene. We've got some beautiful reflections, some water, and a little boat to imagine yourself being there probably be really cold. I don't know how I would feel as long as I had a big puffy coat maybe. And I suppose if there were some birds chirping, I might be entertained. But let me know in the comments below what you thought about this painting. Thanks for being here with me today. My name is Kaylee. I'm a self-taught wet on wet oil painter. Today I just showed you step by step how to paint this oil painting. Please let me know in the comments below what you think about tutorial number six. I'm going to be here trying to post these tutorials for you every single Tuesday, so I hope you enjoy them and I hope that you paint along with me. Smile and be happy, friends!